Hello and welcome to PowerProtect Data Manager Appliance 5.14 R3 release. I'm Sonali Verma from Technical Marketing Engineering team. And today I'm going to present one of the key feature that has been introduced in this release. And that is replication to external Dell PowerProtect DD series appliance or Dell PowerProtect DD virtual edition. So it's a new functionality provided by DM5500 to replicate backup copies to an external Dell PowerProtect DD or DDBE. This replication is implemented through Manage File Replication, that is the MFR. We can replicate backup copies from DM5500 to one or more PowerProtect DD or DDBE that can be on, either on premise or at the remote site. One can also recover the secondary copy to the asset host directly from the target DD series via the source DM5500 UI. Provided on source DM5500, copy metadata or replica metadata must be available to perform copy data recovery. So now let's go over some of the prereqs required to configure and set up this replication. First and foremost is the DDBoost protocol needs to be enabled on replication target as well as file replication encryption should be enabled on both DM5500 and external PowerProtect DD or DDBE. Just to note, on DM5500, DDBoost and file replication encryption are enabled by default. But it's always good to verify that file replication encryption is still enabled on DM5500 while you are configuring replication and enable it on the target site as well. Now let's go over the design and scope. With the current uh, design, what we could do prior to R3 is we could replicate DM5500 to itself, that is the local replication. And we could also replicate DM5500 to another DM5500 that is in the remote site. With R3 release, with the new proposed design, we loosen the restrictions and DM5500 can now not only replicate to another DM5500, but it also allow external DD or DDBE to be added as replication target. And the external DDBE can be either on premise or at the remote site. This external DD or DDBE does serve as a centralized remote data center with large capacity and hold data for longer retention. So that is about the design and scope. Moving on to the demonstration of how we should set up this replication and how we can have our secondary copies using the replication. So we'll first log in as admin to our PowerProtect Data Manager Appliance UI, that is the DM5500 UI. And we need to add the PowerProtect Dell uh, DD or DDB as the external uh, replication target over here. But before that, we would check our prereqs our replication encryption we see is turned on on the DM5500, which is by default. We'll go to our external PowerProtect DD system and uh, check regarding the DD Boost protocol as well as regarding the file replication encryption. So for that, we'll go to protocols DD Boost. We see it was disabled, so we we'll enable that. If we scroll down to the advanced section, we would see that the file replication encryption is either enabled or disabled. We see it's disabled currently, which is how it is by default on a external DD or DDBE. So we will enable by that by using the set options from more tasks and choose file replication DD encryption to enable it. Once this is enabled, we will go back to our PowerProtect Data Manager Appliance to add the external PowerProtect DD or DDBE as the replication target. Here we are going to add it by coming to Infrastructure Storage under Replication Target tab. 
we need to provide a fully qualified uh, host name or the management IP of the external PowerProtect DD or DDB and then click on verification where it will do the certificate handshake and exchange the certificates and verify if everything looks good. It will then proceed to add it as replication target. So we see that the job has been kicked in for it to do the initial discovery of the inventory source of the external PowerProtect DD or DDBE. All right, so the job has been completed now. It's successful. So we will be able to go back to our infrastructure storage and replication target tab. It will take a while to reflect and you see over there, your replication target is all seen in green now. You see that replication encryption uh, has been uh, turned on on both sides and that's why we see that green check mark. Okay, if either one side the replication is turned off, you would see a red cross mark. So what uh, you need to do is what we have shown you, you need to enable the replication encryption on both the sides. Now we are good to set up the protection policy that is for the replication. So we'll go to an existing protection policy and uh, click on replicate to add and uh, set up our replication policy. We see in the storage name, our external DDBE has been added um, as uh, the storage, external storage over here. Since that's the only replication target scene, so it added that by default. Otherwise, we can click on this drop down menu to choose it from there. Uh, currently, you would see the replication target, uh, external PowerProtect DD or DDB, as well as the uh, PowerProtect data manager appliance itself. As we told, it is also possible to do a local replication to within uh, the PowerProtect data manager appliance, how it used to happen even prior to R3. Under storage unit name, you will just specify new so that it creates on its own automatically. Once we set up the replication, it will create a new storage unit. Okay, and we will set up all the schedules over here. If we want to segregate the replication traffic to a separate interface, we will select a, um, a you know different interface than that of management. So these are the interfaces from the target um, replication target, PowerProtect DD or DDBE. So we will choose that uh, from here, and we can segregate our replication data traffic. Moving on, we will set up the schedules and we will proceed further. I'll keep everything as default. You see your uh, replication target storage unit is currently seen as new because it will create a new storage unit for you once the replication is set up. And we see that the job has been kicked in. So it has been completed now. So our replication policy is all set up. We will uh, do an ad hoc replication for you to show how it looks like the primary and the secondary copies. So you see your storage name, your external PowerProtect DD or DDB would be seen over here and the new storage unit that it has created is seen over here. And we'll proceed further. We see that the job has been kicked in to replicate our primary copies to the secondary external storage. And if we see it has started replicating, it uh, validating quest and storage system connections. Then it tried to connect to the source and the destination and started creating list of copies and then started replicating the copies. So we'll wait for it to complete. So we see our ad hoc replication has been completed. And if we go to the infrastructure asset and uh, choose our asset that we have included in the replication policy, we will be able to see the primary copies. This, these are the primary copies. And if we see the other one, these are the secondary copies. Here we can see the host name of the storage where the copies are residing. So this is our external PowerProtect DDBE hostname and this is the PowerProtect Data Manager Appliance hostname. So here are the secondary and primary copies. So that is how we are going to configure and set up our replication. 
थैंक यू ऑल फॉर ज्वाइनिंग